morning. Hi. Hi. At least I hope. Hi. Hi. You're watching. <laughs> uh, I'm Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our platforms. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio, appearing and disappearing from my own screen. And that gentleman out there is Rick Levy in Escondido. Ah, which is in San Diego County. For those of you who are, you know, uh, not very unaware of of California's maps, uh, he just moved around. He just he just he traded in one county for another. So <laughs> basically, I want town for another. We're in yeah. the we're in the highlands of San Diego now. The highlands of San Diego. <laughs> Got ourselves a little rancho. Yeah. Well, if you, you also expanded your your your. You're shelving. Look at that. Holy cow, man. Easy reach. You can just reach behind uh, you and pick out what we're going to do first. Um, the, uh, the, the Cava de Hombre is uh, the, set up. Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> that's called man cave. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be tasting and dissecting uh, Cutwater, Rayador Cutwater Tequila. And this is a brand new one. You probably have not seen it on on the shelves yet. We they, they do a lot of neat stuff on Instagram. Uh, right off the bat, Rick, I, I would like to nominate this the particular brand for Brand of Promise just in labeling and packaging. I like this. This is nice and clean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like the molded bottle. It's still simple. It, you know what this reminds me of? The, the hand feel of the um, Cabeza. Tequila. Remember the um, they uh, f- had Ford's Gin, Cabeza Tequila, and they had a, a rum. And um, the uh, sadly, Cabeza is now um, been been exiled. It is dead. Yes. No, say yes. it isn't so. It, it is. Uh, Ford's Gin has sold the the brand of Ford's Gin. And Cabeza and the, I believe the rum have both stopped production, uh, which is really sad. It saddens me because that's one of my favorite tequilas. And but I like the hand feel of the bottle. It reminds me of very much of the hand feel of Cabeza because Cabeza was okay. designed for the mixologist in mind. Easy pour, right. easy pop off. This is almost the same thing. This is a, uh, I believe it's a seven. This is seven fifty. It's you can wrap your hand around it. It gets a little bit larger towards the top, so it can't slip out. It's got a groove right there that you'd catch if your hands were wet. Yep. Yeah, it's it's very cocktail and bartender friendly. So, uh, and I think that was the whole idea to begin with. I I love the what the 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 labeling. It's a textured feel. And what do we know? Where is this coming from? This this tequila. Uh, this is coming from NOM 1110, so uh, Tequila Armdine de Jalisco oh. in, the, uh, in the Tequila Valley. Bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles. Uh, I can't wait to try this, and the reason for it is that um, we have tasted another. T- Orandine has expanded their operations. I, I, I think uh, Rick and I are, are big fans of, of the Orandine brand. It's one of the... One of, it's the second or third oldest uh, family, or maybe fourth oldest, depending on what book you're reading, um, family of, of tequila production. And they've, they've expanded their, um, their operations, and they're one of the few that went backwards. They actually brought in more stone ovens, and uh, I think they took out a couple of autoclaves. So uh, that was big news when they did that, uh, I think, what, a year ago or something? Yeah, that's great. And uh, they're using open air fermentation on this. I'm a huge fan of that. We are using our Stossel Jarritos. At least I am. Oh, boy. This is the one oh. for, for tequila. Now, I we have tasted one other brand that is coming out of this Orandine distillery. And I was very impressed because the brand itself was... Um, a a um, a lower ABV tequila, and um, I I won't go into the name of the brand, but I was very excited about how good it smelled and tasted. Is that good? Oh, it's oh, got a fantastic wow. aroma! Wow. Now, see, I th- this is to me is a baked agave 
nose. Absolutely. Not so much, not so much green, but, but baked. Whole yeah, thing. I'm getting a... Uh, for some reason, I immediately thought of suerte. Yeah, um, you know, if people people say that suerte is almost grassy. I don't I don't see that. I think it's more green than grassy. Um, you know, it's it smells more like a like a, like a freshly cut agave as opposed to freshly cut grass. But yeah. but now um, now there are uh, uh, suertes in the highlands as well, though. Um, this the distillery is in the uh, in the valley. Um, are we to presume that uh, they're sourcing their agaves locally? Like, are we thinking well, this is going to be a... Uh... The Orandines own their own land. So so it depends on where they're, they have, where they're keeping it. I, I think what, what, what people forget is that, is that Suerte <clears throat> is a Taona tequila, and Taonas tend to leave an imprint, uh, and it's very, uh, the stone, the rock, leaves an imprint um, on on the finished product that it, that is unlike anything that you've had before. So um, I don't, as far as I know, Rayador, at least on the information, we didn't get any POS on with this one, but as far as I know, the Orandines are not using, um, uh, they're not using a Taona to crush this. So, uh, but they are using the traditional brick ovens, as you mentioned, open fermentation, uh, alambiques with stainless steel and copper wire. So now it does say that there's a grassy aroma. I see people call that grassy. I don't call that grass. I, I don't. I, I remember distinctly as a child when I was going to public school, the days that they would mow the lawn at the schools is the day that the lunch, the, the, the lunch room would serve cooked spinach. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, that was that, but but the cooked spinach and the cut grass smells the same to me, and and I'm a big fan of fresh spinach because I I know what cooked spinach smells like, and it smells like the lawn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so to me, this no. is grassy, but it's bright, and it's almost it a, there's a citrus in here too. Yeah, I'm picking up a little bit of lemon. This is really nice, but it is to me. It is a baked agave, um, right. and if they're using the stone ovens, that that there's almost um, uh, there's almost an el ta a tapatio or or el tesoro kind of a background smell to it. <sighs> I think we should taste it. All right. Salute. Oh wow! So it is a forty percent, but uh, you know it's standard proof. But boy, it's got some nice pepper right there on the palate. It does, and what a nice finish too, man! This is there's a there's a there's a white pepper. There's um there's a, it's it's really not sweet on the intake though. I I thought I would it would be sweeter, but it's not. No, it's uh. Yeah, like a lot of times when we have the uh, the uh, baked agaves from the uh, traditional ovens, it'll you know that sugar presence will uh, be brought out a bit. But uh, I'm not getting that. Hmm. There's almost a, a like a just a touch of bitterness on the sides of my palate of my tongue toward the finish, which, which I think it lends, is lending itself to the, to the length of the finish. The finish is really medium to long as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of dryness on the sides of the palate, but yeah. uh, you know, some, uh, it's, it's very moist in the center. Yeah, and the finish is really hanging there. Now, this to me is, is a little bit different than what I'm familiar with coming out of, out of Orendine. I've had Oyitas and I've had, you know, the Gran Orandine and those are beautiful, beautiful tequilas. 
this one's got a whole different flavor profile and even the one that that I tasted before, uh, I'll go ahead and reveal the name. It was Suavecito that that uh, they come in at a lower ABV and they add uh, agave syrup. But it was so well done. And he had switched distilleries because this was a second. Um, he had uh, uh, submitted a, a second set of samples to to me. And um, and you could taste the Orandine imprint. It's very much like a Cofradia imprint. You know, you just... If you have enough tequilas coming out of these distilleries, you just know where they're coming from, right. almost blindfolded. And uh, this one's really different, though. This is not this is not a traditional Orandine flavor profile that I can that I can tell. But you know what? What's really great here is that uh, you know we were talking about the bottle, how mm -hmm. like Cabeza, the bottle is where where. Uh, I guess so, we're assuming here it's designed for mixologists. Right. And this is something that will hold up really well to mixing. Yes. That's, that was where I was headed. I was hoping you'd hit, you'd hit that direction because the character uh, of this tequila is so prominent that it would, uh, you know, pull, from a Paloma to, to whatever you want to use a, a white spirit for, uh, gosh, even a, even a martini. You could just, you know, do yeah. a... You know, you can make this a modified or uh, or Rosita. Uh, yeah. When I'm making uh, when I'm making Rositas, a lot of times I like to use a tequila from a Matitan because it has you know a lot of them have these uh, flavor profiles that really stand out um, even when you mix it. And uh, you know, I'm getting a little bit of uh, yeah, I don't know if it's the same, but it, it's that kind of uh, effect where, you know, it, it has a character that's going to stand up. You know, what's surprising me is that the, the amount of character that's in here and it sometimes you don't find this kind of character in an 80 proof tequila. Right. You find them in the higher proofs. Yeah, I had to check the bottle and, you know, check and see if it was standard proof because it did almost seem like a still strength. Yeah, yeah. It, and it wasn't because I was getting hit with alcohol. It's just because there was so much flavor present on the palate. And that's just it. There's no alcohol at all. Not in these glasses. I can't, even if I drill down, I got I got nothing. I get nothing but baked agave is what I'm getting. And, you know, the, yeah. citrus, the citrus on it. But uh, I'm really surprised, man. I think, I. what do you think? Do you think this is a brand of Promise Worthy? Absolutely. <laughs> Do we we don't have any uh, pricing information on this, do we? No, I don't. Uh, this is so new and it happened so quickly. This is toward the end of our 2019 season. So um, we uh, technically you probably if you've been watching our show, you're not necessarily aware of what goes on in our personal lives. But we we have all just come back from a trip. We But but we have had so many um, brands submit to us this year that um, you know, we have been booked out as far as new tastings all the way out to November uh, and, and probably the end of October. So when you see this, it might be, you know, somewhere in November, maybe early December when you see this. Um, uh, but it'll be, it'll be included in our 2019 Brands of Promise Award um, uh, ballot. And I, I'm I'm sold, man. This is this is this is some really good stuff for a private label. They really I, I like that they you know the packaging is very elegant but as you said this this is this is a a mixologist tequila and it's got bubbles <laughs> <laughs> i love about bubbles man um all right so uh zach has this at old town tequila right now for 33 dollars, and oh, uh i think oh, that's a great price point it's a bargain i think we'll put that yeah. in, in the value category as well you can't go wrong Rayador Cutwater Tequila. Go find it if you're in San Diego County or anywhere in Southern California or, uh, or at Old Town Liquors in San Diego. You might want to go in there and, and check this out. This is a, again, don't judge the book by its cover. This is a solid tequila coming out of a really solid uh, distillery with pedigree. So, right. so that's our take on Cutwater, Rayador Cutwater Tequila. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman over there is... Enrico Levy in Escondido. 
<laughs> you've been listening and watching Sipping Off the Cuff on all of our platforms or listening to us on Spotify, wherever you download your, your podcasts. And whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>